283 AC, the Targaryen dynasty officially ended and was replaced by the Baratheon dynasty. In King's Landing, in the throne room of the Red Keep, Robert Baratheon was crowned King of all Westeros and Lord of the Seven Kingdoms. During his coronation, he pardoned Ser Barristan Selmy, Varys the Spider, and Jaime Lannister, bringing them all into his service. Ser Barristan was even named Lord Commander of the King's Guard, and Jaime was allowed to keep the White Cloak. Robert had no wish to marry after Lyanna Stark's death, but the realm needed an heir, and Lord John Arryn, the new Hand of the King, suggested that Robert marry Lady Cersei Lannister, the only daughter of Lord Tywin Lannister. He did this to ensure political stability and gain an alliance with the richest house in the Seven Kingdoms, but most importantly, it was to prevent Casterly Rock from supporting Prince Viserys Targaryen, the last living son of the Mad King, who was now the biggest threat to Robert's rule. Though Robert Baratheon was crowned king, the only reason he sat on the Iron Throne as supposed to, for example, Ned Stark, was that Robert Baratheon's grandmother had been a Targaryen princess, the daughter of King Aegon V. So, following the death of Prince Rhaegar, the Mad King, and his grandsons, Robert was next in line to inherit the throne. Even without the rebellion, he was in line to inherit the crown. But there was only one problem. The prince, Viserys Targaryen. Viserys was the only living son of the Mad King, brother to Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, and had a better claim on the Iron Throne. If he decided to ride to Westeros and made a claim, great and small lords might support his claim. So, with Lord John Arryn's advice, King Robert Baratheon begrudgingly took to wife Cersei of House Lannister. Robert and Cersei were married in 284 AC in the Great Sept of Baelor, with Robert draping her with a heavy golden cloak decorated with an onyx stag. A tourney was held to celebrate the royal wedding, though Cersei and Jaime suddenly disappeared on the morning of it. On their wedding night, however, a drunken Robert accidentally whispered Lyanna into Cersei's ear while consummating the marriage, an act that would set the tone for their marriage. That was the only night between Robert and Cersei that was consensual. For fifteen years, Robert ruled as king, though it was not he who truly ruled, but Lord John Arryn. While Robert Baratheon spent his time drunk and whoring throughout the Seven Kingdoms, it was John Arryn who made peace with Dorne after the death of Aaliyah Martell and her children and ruled the realm in Robert's stead. And for fifteen years there was peace in Westeros and a long summer, and great prosperity. But this is not to say that Robert's reign had been completely untroubled. Six years after he was crowned, Balin Greyjoy of the Iron Islands declared himself king and began a war that was known as the Greyjoy Rebellion. In the year 283 AC, during the Battle of the Trident, Robert Baratheon smashed Rhaegar Targaryen's chest open with his great warhammer. This sent a shockwave throughout Westeros, and many of the Seven Kingdoms realized that the war would soon be over and that the Targaryens had lost the Iron Throne. So, many houses that remained neutral throughout the war rushed to send whatever aid they could to Robert Baratheon to gain favor with the soon-to-be king. One of these houses was House Greyjoy of the Iron Islands. The Iron Islands had not involved themselves with the War of Robert's Rebellion, but following the death of Prince Rhaegar, Balon and Euron Greyjoy, the eldest sons of Lord Quellon Greyjoy, urged their Lord Father to send aid to Robert as to reap as much plunder as possible. Lord Quellon, whose health had been failing, let himself be convinced by his sons and rose against House Targaryen to aid Robert Baratheon in his rebellion. He led fifty longships against the Reach, keeping most of his fleet at home to guard against House Lannister. Quellon led his ships along the Mander River and would win victories against the Reach, but in his old age, he would die at sea in a meaningless battle at the Mander's mouth against the Shield Islands, and the Ironborn's contribution to the war was minimal. Lord Quellen Greyjoy was buried at sea, according to the traditions of the Iron Islands, so he may dine in the waterly halls of the drowned god and his eldest son, Balon, reigned in his stead. After his father's death, the now Lord Balon Greyjoy left the war, 
and went back to the Iron Islands to claim the Sea Stone Chair. By this time, Robert Baratheon had entered into King's Landing and had been crowned King of all Westeros. Those who supported Robert during his rebellion were rewarded with land and riches, but those who supported the Targaryens were punished. Some lands were extracted, and others, like Sir Alison Thorne, were sent to the Wall. Among those who were Targaryen loyalists were the Reach and Dorne, who had begrudgingly accepted Robert as king. Balin Greyjoy saw this and believed that the Seven Kingdoms were divided, that the king on the Iron Throne lacked the support of the nobility, and that if the Ironborn were to rise in rebellion and claim independence, Robert would not be able to muster a host against him. He had good reasons to believe this. First, Dorne and the Reach had been Targaryen loyalists, and Dorne did not have a love for Robert, especially since the death of Elia Martell and her children. Second, since the Ironborn had, unlike almost all of the Seven Kingdoms, remained largely neutral during the war, they had retained their strength. But Balin still did not declare independence from the Iron Throne, and for six years he remained fixed on building a war fleet that would be strong enough to resist the coalition of the Seven Kingdoms against the Iron Islands. So, in 289 AC, in the sixth year of King Robert's reign, after the completion of the Iron Fleet, Lord Balin Greyjoy declared himself as King Balin the Ninth of the Iron Islands and rose in rebellion, which would be known as the Greyjoy Rebellion. In the year 289 AC, Balin Greyjoy of the Iron Islands declared himself king, effectively beginning a rebellion against the Iron Throne. Balin believed that the king on the Iron Throne, Robert Baratheon, was weak and lacked the support of the nobility and legitimacy to rally a force against him. But Robert had married the daughter of Lord Tywin Lannister, and in doing so, had allied himself strongly with the Westerlands. So, in the year 289 AC, Balin Greyjoy decided to begin his rebellion by burning the Lannister fleet situated at Lannisport in the Westerlands. His brothers, Euron and Victarion Greyjoy, led a small fleet where Victarion tossed the first torch onto the flagship of Tywin Lannister, Lord of Casterly Rock, destroying the Lannister fleet completely. This victory at Lannisport allowed Balin Greyjoy to maneuver his Iron Fleet to attack the Sea Guard in the Riverlands, which was also another royalist force allied to Robert Baratheon. Roderick Greyjoy, Balin's eldest son, led the fleet to Sea Guard, where he attempted to take the castle by storm. But Roderick Greyjoy was slain in the battle by Lord Jason Malister, Lord of Sea Guard, and the Iron Born were pushed back from the Iron Man's Bay to the Sunset Sea. This was a major setback for Balan's ambitions. His eldest son and heir was killed, and no lands were captured from the Riverlands. The defeat at Seaguard also alerted the rest of the Seven Kingdoms of the Ironborn Rebellion, which lost Balon the advantage of surprise. Robert Baratheon, who had not seen battle for nearly six years, eagerly called his banners and began a counterattack on the Iron Islands. The king's brother, Stannis Baratheon, who led the royal fleet at Dragonstone, managed to combine his own fleet with the Redwine fleet of the Arbor and ships from Old Town to form a larger navy. Stannis led this combined force against the Ironborn and completely smashed the Iron Fleet led by Victarion Greyjoy at Fair Isle. The Battle of Fair Isle sealed the defeat of House Greyjoy as now the Iron Fleet was disbanded and Robert Baratheon could cross from the Greenlands, accompanied by the Northmen led by Eddard Stark. The attack came from all sides as Stannis, fresh from victory, subdued Greatwick in his brother's name, and the army led by Robert Baratheon and Eddard Stark crossed to Pike and laid siege to it. Robert's forces assaulted the southern wall of Pike with siege engines, shattering the main watchtower and bringing parts of the surrounding wall down. Marin Greyjoy, the second son of Balin Greyjoy, was killed in the breach. When the walls came crushing down, Thoros of Myr was the first to cross, racing through the broken walls of Pike, wielding a flaming sword of wildfire. 
The fighting in the castle was fierce, but eventually, the castle was taken. The victory over Pike ended the Greyjoy Rebellion. The Iron Fleet was routed and destroyed, and Balin Greyjoy, who was in the castle, was brought before Robert in chains, where he bent the knee and was forced to swear fealty once more to the Iron Throne. His surviving son, the nine-year-old Theon, was taken to Winterfell as a hostage to ensure Balon's good behavior. The Greyjoy Rebellion allowed Robert to truly strengthen his hold on the Iron Throne and discouraged any other rebellion. Robert would rule for nine more years before his death in 298 AC.